Hi there! For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 18 pan Sakura Koi watercolors and the 12 pan Creative Art colors. In this video, you'll see me swatch the paints and then create artworks with them. I'll be rating them in terms of availability, pigment information, transparency, cost, painting experience, and packaging. Sakura Koi has been my go-to for painting on different types of paper, even on bond paper, because it's cheap and highly pigmented. It's my go-to for doodling, but recently I've been using the Marabu Aqua watercolor ink more because it's always on top of my desk. Even though it doesn't feel like my other watercolors, there's a unique charm to the Sakura Koi. It has this dry, almost chalky consistency, but the pigments are fine enough that it doesn't bother me. They activate really well, and whenever possible, I try not to remove the pigment on the lid because the color mixes are still good for painting. Most watercolors are like that, but some student grade ones aren't as nice when reactivating. What makes CIC different from the regular line is that it has an interesting range of colors from metallics to fluorescent. There's a lot of definitions for the fluorescent colors, but let's just say they glow. So I thought it would be great for glowing stuff for highlights. In terms of availability, I would rate it a 5 out of 5 because it's available everywhere. I couldn't find any light fast rating or pigment information on the website or any other blogs I visited. However, one website claimed that it has a light fast rating of 3 and some people even called it fugitive colors but I wouldn't want to label them as such because there hasn't been a, a test done for it anyway. So. Let's not be hasty. So as far as pigment information goes, I would rate this as 0 out of 5. If you don't particularly care about paint information and you don't mind that your paints might fade over time when exposed to certain things like sunlight or humidity, you can give this a go. And like I said in my previous video, if you're looking to sell your work as a print, you can go ahead and just take a picture or scan it. And that way you're artwork will last forever. Now for the next part, in the watercolor world you have purists that don't like non-transparent watercolors and Sakura Koi just happens to be a bit more opaque than your regular watercolors. You can see from this watch that it somehow covers the black lines. I decided to test this out on my black sketch pad that I haven't really tried using and I compared it with some of my other paints. So you can see how opaque it is, but it's not super opaque that I would call it a gouache. So as far as transparency goes, I will rate this a 3 out of 5. Gouache is a paint that provides a flatter, more even coverage, almost like poster color. Some people actually like their watercolor paints to be a bit more on the opaque side. However, this also means that once you mix the paints on the page, they won't layer as well because the color tends to mix with the color underneath it. So it tends to reactivate the color underneath and you start mixing instead of layering. Having a more opaque watercolor can be a bit more forgiving when you're working on a piece, especially if the color is staining. And while the Canton XL makes it easy to remove or scrub off paints, some papers make it difficult once the pigment has settled down. And I know from experience that some transparent watercolors just stain. I do prefer transparent watercolors over opaque ones, but if you're a beginner, having the ability to paint over your mistakes or scrub them off can be a bit nice.
Like I said, transparent watercolors allow you to layer color down on top of each other, with each layer showing the color underneath, sort of like a multiply effect in digital media. As for the cost, it's quite cheap, and there's always a sale going on. However, it's not the cheapest paint you can probably get. But it's a solid choice for a student watercolor brand though. Now before I give my thoughts on how it feels like to paint with it, I'll go ahead and show you the process of how I did these two fan arts. One is my favorite character from Alien 9. It's an underrated anime that a lot of people don't know about, but I absolutely love it. Another one is a character from a game called VA-11, Hall-A, or Valhalla for short. I did both line arts digitally and printed them out using uh, Clip Studio Paint, which is probably going to be my preferred process moving forward. Doing stuff digitally makes the process a lot faster, at least for me. And it makes the line art reproducible. So if ever I make a mistake while painting, I can go over it again. What you can see on her head is a symbiotic Borg, which is an alien that takes nutrients from her and allows her to fight other aliens, basically protecting her. I always loved how cute it looked and how it looked like she had wings. Such a nice design. Anyway, I really love how the colors mix together. With some cheaper paints that use combination mixes, the colors tend to go muddy. This isn't the case with Sakura Kai. I feel like I can keep mixing from any color and it won't turn so muddy.
Now for the CAC, I realized I would have a difficult time trying to paint the piece I wanted because I typically favor darker colors nowadays. Before I was all for pastel shades and I kept my paintings really light. I was afraid of making it darker to the point that I might ruin the painting but now I think I'm going overboard with trying all these dark colors. I quickly realized that no matter how thick I made the paint, I wasn't going to get the right value I wanted just from the set alone and there was a point that I felt like a mess so I went ahead and grabbed the Koi set. I think the CAC was meant to be used in conjunction with other watercolor paints, not just by itself. Once the colors were laid down too thick, it was almost like poster color or gouache like I said in consistency and I honestly didn't like it so I wouldn't try doing this again. So how did it feel to paint with them? For the regular Sakura Koi, I had rated a 4.5 out of 5. I won't give it a perfect score just because when you have too much paint on the paper, it kind of resembles gouache already. And as for the creative art colors, I wouldn't probably use this alone and I wouldn't recommend this to be your first set. So I'd give it a lower rating of 4 out of 5. The color range is just not ideal. Lastly, let's talk about packaging. I think I might have one of the older versions of the Sakura Koi because the CAC opens flat, so maybe this is like their new packaging style. It was one caveat that I hated before. Always bothered me that the Sakura Koi I bought had a slanted palette, so whenever I painted with it, the paint would just drip down. And the plastic that they use for the palette sort of feels cheap as you can see, but it does get the job done. Although I wouldn't try dropping it. I mean, you wouldn't knowingly drop it, but like it happens. So just be careful that it doesn't break because um, the plastic that they use for the paints are a bit flimsy. So as far as packaging goes, the older Sakura Koi I had is a 3 out of 5 because of the flimsy build and the mixing wells are slanted, while the newer CAC is a 4 out of 5. How does it compare to other paints? If you're a beginner and you're concerned with selling your paints after, maybe you can look at other brands that have pigment information like the Windsor and Newton Cotman or the Van Gogh. This paint actually reminds me of the Van Gogh a lot, but if you just want to use this to draw and paint loosely, definitely try it out. And to reproduce your work, you can always take a picture and scan it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see more watercolor reviews. Bye!